Hi friends, and today we shall be discussing about Altair in Python. And I'll walk you through this Altair data visualization library in Python. How is it different from existing data visualization library and much more? So let's just walk on what is Altair. So Altair, it is a declarative statistical data visualization library in Python. And you can see in the image, he is Jake van der Plas, and he is the developer of Altair, along with Brian Granger. So they both have uh, largely contributed to the Python community. And you can trust this library because, because of the contribution, and they know what works in Python and what not. So they can fix the bugs and errors very very fast you know so this is a very evolving kind of uh, library wherein it is just just developing and we can see in time that how it really augurs well or not so now i would say that this provides uh, this is actually based on vega -like grammar it derives its features from there and this vega light is a json it's based on json grammar uh, for visualization so uh, we will be working with this uh, Altair in, in the upcoming video. So I will tell you how does it really take the data from Vega and uh, work on it. So this Altair, I would say that this uh, figures out how to plot the data. Now, this is very important here in Altair. This distinguishes it from others. So we will dwell on this topic on this in the uniqueness slide when we will just move on with the video. So let's just... Uh, move on to the next slide and that is the grammar i want you to understand this term grammar and when i use it that grammar of data visualization what do i mean by this grammar i mean that the grammar means that it is the ability of a language to express itself it is it is something that uh, it has its own syntax it has its own set of rules it has its own you know um, kind of i would say that it has its uh, own um, way of expressing itself to 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 the people so uh, how do you plot your graph how do you write that graph with the syntax you use that is the grammar which determines that language and the easy it is the robust the languages and the more easier we can use it so what makes Altair unique also is that it has a good grammar of data visualization it has a good grammar of graphics i can say and uh, that's what makes it really nice and easy to work with. So we shall see the grammar of Altair now. But I would also like to tell you, mention a few uh, grammar-based data visualization libraries, which are like ggplot, which was the first one which was being released and it was being used for R. And then later on, plot9 came for Plotly, which was an inspiration. It was based on ggplot of R. And, and we have also this Altair, we've got uh, Vega, we've Vega Light, we've got uh, Plotly. They have their own grammar. They have their own way of expressing themselves. That is in the way of syntax, of their own rules, on their own set of parameters, in which you will uh, really use these languages and plot your graph, show your data, and show the story what you really want to convey from that data. So that is what grammar makes it really powerful to for any data visualization library. So. Let's just explore the grammar of Altair. What does the grammar of Altair is and how does it really makes it unique? You know, this is this was really interesting while I was doing this. Now, uh, don't just freak out by by seeing this thing. But first, see this, uh, the second uh, image here, wherein you see the mark, you see data column and you see encodings. This is an example I have taken from the Altair documentation. I'll provide the link in the description box so that you can also go through it. So this is a cars data set, which they have taken from Vega data set. So this cars data set has some data columns like you can see cylinder horsepower displacement displacement and all and the origin country etc and in marks you've got the mark through which you want to display the data whether you want a point you want line you want circles or you want rectangle area what it is so these things we will explore when we'll be doing our practical session with uh, with altair and this is really very interesting to plot you know this just gives you so interactive plots and i was really excited to work with altair i will i will come up with videos for this don't worry about that now we come to encodings this encoding is a really interesting part in altair because this is how your data looks you know this is how you are expressing that this is how i want to show my data so you give x y you give rows and columns you give data type here you you give various like i like as you can see the text typing the text you mention everything in this encoding and this is how your data is being displayed okay remember one thing for from the above image that you've got q n 
OT that is it represents various data types which Altair uses quantitative, nominal, temporal, or ordinal data. Because you're working with different data sets and we are working with different type of data in Python with our data set. So uh, you have to represent each type of data differently to convey more meaning. And what makes Altair unique is encoding. Now, if you're working with Pandas data set, you don't have to worry about how your data would be represented represented because Altair takes care of it. It just by default for plots your data according to its data type. So isn't it cool? I mean, this is really smart when your your uh, library is itself plotting in the data. You just give it and it will plot it accordingly. You don't have to worry about what to choose, what not to choose. You just focus on the meaning and just interpretation of the data. So that's what I found. It, it's, it is really nice. And um, the another thing is that if you're working with the URLs, then you have to manually specify all these data types. Okay, so that is uh, that is a thing which has to be kept in mind. Now, next thing I will move on to. How is it different from Plotly? Plotly is offering n number of features, n number of interactive plots, cool plots, and we have seen in several videos of Plotly. There are three tutorials of Plotly where we see animation, we see hover data, we see chloropets and chloropets and whatnot. So how is it different from Altair? Actually, Plotly was quite old. It was uh, uh, like released in 2012, but Altair is catching up. It was released in 11th of July 2016, as I mentioned. And um, so the latest versions of Plotly has been released quite quite early. As compared to Altair, and you can see the downloads, you can see the folks, you can see the watches, the popularity of Plotly and Altair. The Plotly is like uh, it is ahead of Altair, and I say that uh, since this is quite new library, quite new data visualization uh, tool in Python, it it will means I will say that give it some time, maybe it will you know uh, take take Plotly over, or maybe ahead of race. You don't know, you never know. So that's why there are various versions which makes it more robust, fix errors, and help you work with ease with your data. So if the library provides it, what's wrong in using it, right? So we see that um, it is compatible. Plotly is also compatible with R, and it is used uh, not only for data visualization, but also for your machine learning task also. And uh, the next thing and now I would walk you through is uh, the uniqueness of uh, Altair. So what makes Altair unique is we've already discussed in previous slides, but again, just to mention it, that it's intuitiveness, that it just understands your data and the type of your data and it plots it. So this is a really smart feature and this is really intuitive, you know, it is it is its intuition that yes, now this is there, so I will plot it like that. So this makes it unique from other graphing or plotting libraries that we have in Python. And the another thing is that it is statistical visualization. It provides that statistical visualization plots. I have seen that it was uh, uh, giving us uh, confidence intervals. You can plot various confidence intervals, mean and uh, median, and different kind of uh, statistical, um, I would say, the calculations which we do. It could be plotted and shown it with ease. So how representative your data becomes when you can really come up with showing you know, great uh, way of expressing that this is the mean and this is how the line goes, this is how the confidence interval is. And it becomes really communicative, impressive, and it, your data, your meaning is being conveyed in no time. So that is what is making Altair really stand out from different uh, data visualization libraries as of now. And uh, uh, next thing is that Altair and Vega, when I say that these, these terms, one interesting fact was that I read it that um, these are the uh, Altair means um, simplicity in uh, the myth of Japanese tales, and uh, both of them now uh, it means they are celestial princes, the goddess of sky. But now they have been used for the you know libraries and some fancy terms, but they have a meaning, you know, if you search search for that. So so I would just conclude this with something really positive about Altair Python library that it is a good library to work with and next i'll be coming with the more demo of altair the next will be the practical follow-up how do you really plot interesting plots with altair bar plot chart and line and different rectangle plots how your data is being displayed and where is it displayed how how it looks like how it is really interpreting your data 
its uniqueness and intuitiveness, statistical calculation. So we shall explore this in our data set and things would be more clear then because this is just a theory part. So just keep in mind how what LTR just to give you a rough idea about what LTR is. But uh, the real and the real picture would begin when we will start doing the demo of it and we will start seeing how to plot these data. It's really interesting to work with because I'm excited to show you how to really go about with go ahead with the plots of Altair. So stay tuned with me and thanks for watching, guys.